you are the citizens of the water and sewer districts, and we work for you. And uh, we need to, you need to hear from us on how well we're doing. Right. Okay, got another. Oh, you know what? I wish you would stay home. <laughs> Okay, well, let me see if we can get started then, okay? All right. Um, the town of Goshen Water and Sewer Team really starts with the town board. The town board has responsibility for establishing the goal of where we go and what it looks like. We also have to put strategies in place on how we're going to achieve that goal. And the third thing that we do is we deploy the resources. And in life, there are only three resources no matter where you're at. Time, which we never seem to have enough of, money, which we don't seem to have enough of, and people. And uh, we can always use good people. So the town board uh, are the ones who do those three things. Create the vision and what we want, the strategies to get there, and, and apply the, the uh, resources accordingly. Which brings up to our department head. Um, Robert Knoll, he's a gentleman up here with a blue coat on. Uh, you'll see this is Broderick Knoll-ME. Broderick is a mechanical engineer. He's out of Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute. He was a design engineer, still is a design engineer in his own business. Uh, Broderick has been with us uh, as the department head of our Department of Public Works and Water and Sewer. Someone's, uh, why don't you turn your mics off? Okay, for, because it's, oh, I think, feedback. Okay. The, uh, but having an engineer in the water and sewer department is like having a doctor in the family. So if you have a bellyache or something, you can tell if, you're, if your husband or sister or somebody's a doctor, then, well, do you have a, 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 a gas pain or do you have a, uh, uh, a more serious problem, like appendicitis or whatever. And Broderick is that kind of resource for us. He has saved you and saved us a lot of consternation, a, a lot of money, and a lot of lost time. And, uh, and I'm very appreciative of what he does for us. Our water and sewer operator is Joe Klopchen. He's licensed by the state of New York. He too is a, go a college graduate. Uh, He's taken all the, the coursework to become a licensed water sewer operator. He's been with us since 2004 or 2005. We have uh, two water and sewer maintenance technicians, Mark Warren Jr., who's been with us since day one, and David Doty, who's been in the department probably about a year or so. Uh, administrative support is Barbara Sokolowski. Uh, if you call in wanting to have, you have questions relative to the billing or this or that, Barbara's normally the one you talk to. William Standish is a college graduated accountant. He's our budget officer. He looks after your money. He looks after my money. Very, very good guy. And the water and sewer co-commissioners are myself and Ken Newbold. We've been on this job eight years now. I think we've seen everything once, perhaps twice. And so it's pretty hard to uh, show us something we haven't seen before. On the next page, I want to do it a little bit different than I've done in the past. I want to go back and uh, share with you where this town board has been. We've been together now eight years. And, uh, but if we go back, the first thing back in 2006 is we needed to replace the chronically leaking water line in Section A of Hamiltonian Park. And for those who live in Hamiltonian Park back then, you remember you had 10 water leaks in 12 months. It cost $77,000 to fix those leaks. The total budget for Hamiltonian Park water was only 85000 So it only left 8000 to run your, your show. The fact is, we didn't have the money to pay all the bills. Had we not fixed that line, we'd be in big, bad trouble. The town was asked to take over the Scotchtown Water District after abandonment by its owner. The Orange County Health Department had placed the district under a boil water notice due to citizen health concerns. 
and uh, I can honestly say that was a frightening experience. I was in my office, I got a call from Dr. Hudson in the health department, and she said, Doug, can you get over here right now? I said, well, okay. And I got over there, and she had a table this size with about a dozen people sitting around it with an empty chair. And she then, she and the others started telling me how bad things were in Scotchtown Water District and how the water was not healthy to drink without boiling it first. Now, how did something like that happen in the town of Goshen? It happened through neglect and not funding improvements at the appropriate times. So that was on our plate, also in 2006. We've had higher rates in groundwater inflow and infiltration into Hamiltonian Park and Arcadia Hill Sanitary Sewer Lines. Now, I and I, as they call it, a sewer line is not pressurized. It's got lower pressure than the, than the soil around it. So when the water of the, of the water table goes up, okay, hydraulically, if there's a hole in that line, it will go through that, that crack or that hole and into that line. That water then becomes part of the sewage, and it's pumped to the village, and they charge us to process it. And so in reality, citizens were paying as much or more to treat the water than they were the sewage. And we know how much water was getting in because we deliver water to the homes with a meter at each home. And we know how many gallons of sewage that goes to the village. The difference is how much water slips into the line. And so we had a major problem. Next thing was is there had been a, when the village built their new sewer plant, there were excessive and unsubstantiated sewer charges levied by the village of Goshen following the building of the and startup of the new sewer plant. And it was one of those things they had tremendous costs in building this plant. They just passed it <coughs> on what they thought was appropriate. We we challenged that. And to make matters worse, they were we were both using a 50-year-old intermunicipal agreement, which was long outdated. Um, the next one, there was little to no strategic planning in place for infrastructure improvements. We were so busy covering up breaks and pumps that are failing and these things, we weren't forward-looking to what we were going to do next. We were too busy spending the money fixing broken things. Environmental issues were not defined or considered in regard to future needs. They were way down on the list. We were more concerned with getting potable water into the homes than we were environmental issues at that time. And there was no, con no focus on continuous cost reduction. No organization should be in place without considering ongoing cost reduction. Otherwise, you're just wasting money whether it be a household, a town, or a private enterprise. So that's what we've had to manage as a board within the eight years. The next page says, well, what do we do about it? In fact, there were two ladies from Arcadia Hills. I really wish I remember their names. They were a tag team. They were on extensions on the same line. They called me. And they were cleaning my clock. You know, all the things that were wrong, dirty water, high cost, and, so, and, and finally the lady in desperation said, somebody has to do something. And she burst into tears. Well, I don't do well with that, and uh, would it be my wife and these two little ladies that I didn't meet? And I got the message, we have to do something. And that's what we've been doing since. The first item is uh, for Hamilton Park water line. Uh, Mr. Newbold and I went over and talked to John Hall, Congressman John Hall. And we did a pretty good job of begging. We had it all laid out what we needed. And he secured a grant of $400,000 for the 166 homes in the Hamiltonian Park. It took two years to get the money after we, it was approved, but we got, we only actually we got, we got $387,000. Everybody was processing it kept $13,000 of the money. That's how the government works. We replaced the line in 2007, and we've not had a water leak since. Problem resolved. 
Uh, in number two, rebuilt Scotchtown water facilities. My predecessor had Stan Tech Engineering come in and stood right over there and gave us a chart of what it's going to cost to rebuild that facility. And they said in 2005 it was going to cost $450,000 to rebuild the facility. It shocked all the citizens in that subdivision. They didn't want the town to take it over because they didn't. They were going to have to shock out $10,000 per household. Well, we told them we would do our best. We couldn't guarantee, but we're the team to do it. Sit private citizens cannot do what's required. Just can't do it. So we went at it with a vengeance. And on the following sheet, this one, we spent $127,186. We came in under budget $322,814. We spent less than 25% of what the engineers said they were going to do. And the way we did that is we used the recession for our advantage. We went out, we needed to replace the tank, for example. The tank was one third full of dirt and rust. And we went out, we got an RFP, we went out for quotes, they all came back in with big numbers. And we turned them all down. We said, we can't afford you. The town then went down to North Carolina and bought the tank. No intermediate, we just bought it directly from the manufacturer. Brought the tank home, sat out on the lot there for about a year. Went out for bids again and got someone to install it for a little or nothing. So, because they were now in their third or fourth year of the recession, they wanted to keep the men busy. So that couldn't happen good during normal good times, but it happened fine during bad times. Um, we implemented plans to reduce inflow and infiltration, and I'll share that with you later on, what we've been doing. The town board challenged the village regarding sewer charges. It took three years to resolve the issue. The village board was angry at us. Uh, sometimes they were nasty to us. Okay. But we prevailed. We, bet, we put together what I call an Olympic team. We had the right engineer, the right accountant, and then this board, we went at it in, our right, in the right attorney. And we went at it and we got everything we had asked for. Which you and we didn't want anything that was not deserving to it. I mean, we didn't want something that was not shouldn't have got. But we got everything that we should have got. Um, we also developed a new five-year intermunicipal agreement. We eliminated that 50-year-old one that didn't work. And that agreement will go from the year 2011 to 2015. We've also implemented an ongoing cost reduction plan. And that plan that, that uh, I value so much, in 2012, we saved $143,500. And I'm going to show you a page in a moment where I can put out a list of where we, what we've done. And then we've implemented an ongoing environmental improvement plan. And uh, I'll show you what we're doing in that regard. So if you go to the one that's called, the page called 2012 Achieved Cost Savings, the first item is uh, electricity reduction. Uh, George Lyon sitting to my left, uh, he went out and started working with electrical uh, alternate suppliers. And he's, he secured to the town for two years, 2012 and 2013, an alternate supplier of energy they gave us a 3.2 2 cent uh, savings per kilowatt hour for a two year contract starting in, in uh, April, I mean, sorry, July 1st of 2012. That along with the, Mr. Knowles replaced some pumps with more efficient pumps and, and ballast and lights and this and that, new, new ideas to save energy. And you can see going down there, for example, Arcadia Hills, we saved $1,141.77 versus the same time last year. We, um, the water sewer operator cost reduction. I called Mr. Klopchen, and I said, Mr. Klopchen, 
we have Mr. Broderick Knoll here now. He's an engineer. He's doing a lot of the work that you were doing before. I want you to sharpen your pencil and tell us what you can you can do for us in reducing your costs. And I was home eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at lunchtime when I called him. When the idea hit my mind. So he says, I'll call you right back. He says, no, no, you take all the time you need, just sharpen your pencil. I want a big number. He called back in about two minutes. He said, well, Doug, I'm going to reduce my charges to you $800 a month. And he did. And so it's $9,600 a year that he doesn't get. And we're now in the second year of that. Mr. Knoll re replaced both of the pumps in Hamiltonian Park in 2011. And uh, we were averaging one and a quarter repairs per year for the pumps that we had. It's $7,500 a repair. So now, instead of paying $9,375 per year for repairs to the pump repair shops, we're giving them nothing because these new pumps are not failing and they're state of the art, highly energy efficient. They should have been replaced 10, 15 years ago. The IMA and uh, what we've been doing on I&I, &I, uh, the village sewer charges this year, we, reduction, we, we were charged 30.5% less for Hamiltonian Park and 9% less for Arcadia Hill. Between the two, the bill was fi over $51,000 less. It was for two reasons. One is, and we'll show you later on, the new IMA, the new contract we had in the village, is really beneficial to the town. But beyond that, we're not sending them as much water. We still send them a lot of water, but not as much. <clears throat> in personnel, we reduced one full-time person uh, in the, in the, the man resigned and went to Florida, the state of Florida to work for his father-in-law. Uh, we backfilled him in with something in the highway department, but we paired, we're, the way it's working out, we're saving the equivalent of benefits, so we get about a $39,000 uh, savings on that particular item. And then Mr. Knoll is uh, rehabbing, uh, rebuilding our water sewer truck versus buying a new one. He intends to spend about $9,500 in doing so. A new truck just like it is $4,500, so he's going to save about $45,000, pardon me, I love it. Uh, we're going to save about $30,500. So all total for the year, 2012, we've saved $143,529.84. And that's bona fide. That is dollars that we were going to give to somebody else had we not done these things. The next page is, I'm going to start with Hamiltonian Park about our accomplishments. Uh, we implemented the second year of the new intermunicipal agreement. I'm going to explain it here so that I don't have to explain it under Arcadia Hills because it's one and the same. If you recall, the village had a dirt pile where they had removed the old landfill from the village and put it in a dirt pile. And uh, we, in our arbitration, shared with the arbiter, nobody in the town ever put in that sewer in that, in that uh, uh, landfill. That was a village-owned, village-operated landfill, so people in the town of Goshen should not have to pay for relocating it. And he agreed. So we do not pay for any of that relocation charge, putting it there to begin with or taking it away. We got a 24% reduction in the debt service, principal and interest because the new sewer plant was 24% larger than the old plant. And we couldn't capitalize on that. If they want to build a plant bigger, fine. But we shouldn't have to pay for that. So we don't pay for that. The arbiter agreed with that. We got reductions in administrative charges. And I don't hold me to this number, but I think it was about 60000 a year for all administrative charges. And so whatever they were, and I'd have to go back to the IMA, but uh, we don't pay our share of those. It's, we, we pay a reduced share. And the last item is we don't pay a 10% out of village fee uh, for the principal and interest for the debt. We pay, we pay a premium, 10% premium for use of the village plant operations, 
because we're out of the building, which is fine. We focused on reducing I and I. We've completed inspections of 156 homes for inappropriate connections, things like sump pumps and roof drains and things. Um, we have 11 houses remaining to look at. The real reason we're not these 11 haven't been done is because people are not home when we're working, and vice versa. But we have 11 houses to go. We found two inappropriate connections. I didn't see them. Ken saw one and said it was a major gusher. Every time this person's sump pump went on in the basement, it was pumping water right into the sanitary sewer line that we all had to pay for. We rehabilitated three severely damaged and leaking manholes. And I did the calculation on this myself, and I figured it's about 5 million gallons of water. If you take 35 gallons a minute, times 20, uh, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours a day, times 100 days. It's about 5 million gallons. And that's water that we will no longer have to pay for. You know, as, as sewage. Okay. Um, in 2013, by the way, those were rehabbed late in 2012 or early 2013, so we didn't see much of that on the sheet in the numbers this, this time around. In 2013, we're going to continue to identify these high impact uh, leaking manholes, and our plan is to spend $35,000 repair. We're going to continue with our ongoing cost reduction ideas. And there, we, I got another idea I want to put on there and pursue for next year. We have a real coup here. We, last year I said we were negotiating with a company called New York Farms LLC. They want to build homes out on the old Chester Road on the old Coke farm. They want to build either 70 or 77, 77 homes. And we said, well, why don't you come in and, and be part of the water and sewer districts for Hamiltonian Park? And, uh, and they agreed with this. We've, we've talked to the people in Hamiltonian Park. We agreed to it. We've, we've finalized negotiations. As part of that negotiation, New York Farms is going to give $130,000 to the citizens in Hamiltonian Park to work on their sewer problems just for the privilege of being there and being connected in. Now that's pending right now because it's not, we don't get the money until they start building those homes. And that could be a year or two away. But the, the deal is signed off on. Mr. Knoll is going to install a, a really that's a lift station, but sewer pump backup generator. He's designed it, priced, or spec it out. It's a, it's a generator that will run on natural gas, so we don't have to fill up with gasoline or diesel. There's no leaking. Hooked right up to the natural gas line. If the power goes off in Hamiltonian Park, if, for whatever reason, hurricane or thunderstorm or whatever, the, the pumps are going to run. and will avert a, a, a problem with our uh, uh, spillage of sewage. The next thing that we're going to be doing in the next few weeks is to initiate negotiations for further expanding the sewer district and with Maplewood subdivision. Now Maplewood wants to build somewhere between 95 to 105 houses or units across the road off across on uh, Craigville Road. And we're looking for them also to share the sewer. If that's the case, you add a 77 homes for, there are 166 homes today in Hamiltonian Park. You add 77 or 70 for uh, New York Farms, then you put in another 100, give or take, for this one. Hamiltonian Park is going to be the largest single water and sewer district in town. And the advantage of having a large district is, if something breaks, you spread it across more homes. We have these small subdivisions of 40, 45 homes. It's a killer when something breaks and you got to go to the people and say, fix it. If you have 500 homes, it's a whole lot easier. 
Okay, and the district, the uh, that's it for sewer for Hamilton Park water uh, for 2013 routine maintenance. We're going to implement our ongoing cost reductions. We're going to uh, we're going to expand it. Well, wait a minute. I got something mixed. I got two things into one. This next item: expand water district New York Farms. Uh, the water district. They're going to give us eighty thousand dollars to add, to work with a become part of the Hamiltonian Park Water District. Okay, that should have been up under under a two thousand twelve accomplishment. That's already done. It too is pending. We don't get the eighty thousand dollars till they start building the homes, and that water will go for, toward building a second water storage tank. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to initiate negotiations with the water with Maplewood for expanding the water district again. So that's Hamiltonian Park, um, Arcadia Hills. Again, implementing the second year of the new IMA. We focused here on the inflow and infiltration. We inspected 218 houses for inappropriate connection. We have 39 houses remaining. We eliminated four inappropriate connections, sump pumps or roof, roof leaders or whatever it was. And we rehabilitated six severely damaged leaking manholes. And every time you fix one of these manholes, the groundwater stays out. The planned actions for the sewer district for 2013 is we're going to complete these inspections for inappropriate uh, sanitary sewer connection. We're going to spend another $30,000 on the INI manhole project. And I'm going to look as the year progresses. If it looks like we're, we're, we have more money in the bank, I'm going to spend more money in the bank toward fixing those, those manholes. And I think that will happen in the second half of the year. We'll continue with the ongoing cost reduction ideas. Everything for the water district is the same as Hamiltonian Park with one exception. We're going to prepare for a 2014 inspection and potential repair of the water storage tank. So we'll have to put together a request for, a, a, for pricing or quote. We'll do that late in the year. We'll go out for competitive bids, select who's going to do it, who's got the ability to do it. And what they do is they put a camera down in the tank of any water and they go around and, so, and they look in a video and they take pictures and whatnot and they can tell exactly what the condition of the tank is. And then if we need to take the tank out of service, drain it, clean it, repaint it, repair it, put it back in service. May not need that, but we think in 2014 we need to look at that. Next page is Stonehenge. And um, we continue, in 2012, we continue to focus on the backup well. We put a new well in, a backup well in, in 2011. But the Department of Health and our engineers are saying it's got bacterial contamination. And they think the contamination is coming from surface water. But they don't know how it's getting into the well. It doesn't necessarily have to come off the surface and go down the side of the casing. It could be a hundred feet under the water, come to the case and, and go down. And so how would you fix that? And I'm, I've got some ideas, so I'm going to talk to that in a moment or so. We also replaced 26 home meters with new models. And this time the town got a little smarter. In Hamiltonian Park and Arcadia Hills, we went out and we hired a contractor to buy them and install them. And it cost more. And uh, Broderick's got, we buy them at our cost now, and Broderick's got his guys going out and installing them, saving the money. So it's cheaper for each household. They put 26 in, they have 16 to go. And as we've got the meters, it's just we've got to marry up the availability of the family to let us in the house to do the work. Six minutes. Yeah, but you've got to be there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the next thing that here I go back to the doctor in the in the family. We've had every year one or two water line breaks in Stonehenge, and we shouldn't be having them. It's deep in the ground. 
the pipe should not be fractured. Well, Mr. Uh, Knoll said, you know what I think it is, Doug? We pumped these wells at high pressure, 105 pounds per square inch gauge pressure. That's high. Okay? And what happened, we turned the pumps off, and the water starts going back down the pipe, and then it, 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 it turns back on and has to overcome the head pressure, and when it does, it's fracturing the line. So he's got a programmable controller, logic controller, that he's put in place. He programmed it to have a delay, and by, de and by delaying this process, he thinks he may very well have eliminated the water lines. If you stop and think about that, each time a water line breaks, it used to be $7,700, it's probably at least that today. So we'll see how that works. Um, planned action. Uh, there's another subdivision being built adjacent to Stone Hedge, and the Rieger brothers are building it. And this could be a large, large subdivision. And we're looking, and they're going to build their water storage tank not too far from our water storage tank. So what I'm thinking, rather than putting good money after bad in that well, I'm going to hold off the Department of Health, let them build that subdivision and see if we can hook into them for backup water. At least initiate the action. But in the meantime, our engineers do have a couple ideas of things they want to do uh, with that back well that might correct it. We'll replace the remaining 16 meters and we will implement ongoing cost reductions. <coughs> the next one is Scotchtown. Uh, this is the one I, where I shared we spent $127,000 between the years 2006 and 2012, we have completely rebuilt the water system. It is bought and paid for. We paid cash. Nobody owes anything to anybody. It is owned and operated by the people in that subdivision. There's one thing remaining. It was in such tremendous, horrible condition when we got there, brush and weeds and things, we were cleaning the brush away and the weeds away because of fire hazards. We didn't want to burn down the little building we had there. And they found a piece of a case of a pipe sticking on the ground. They went and checked it out, put a pump in it, and it's water. It was a backup well. Not on a map, no one knew it was there. It's a backup well. And what we're going to do is qualify that backup well as a well. And it's going to take about ten thousand dollars to do all the testing and meet all the requirements of the County of Orange Health Department. So when it's all said and done, we will have two wells out there versus one, and, and then you're home free. There's, not a, there's nothing else to do other than just keep routine maintenance. The next page is capital projects, and this is where we're going to spend money in 2013. If you were to add all the numbers up, it's $200,000. It is $200,000 that we have as a consequence of savings. In our savings plan I talked about, plus the, the increases in rates that we gave you two years ago. So we have the money in the bank. We're going to spend this money and we think we're going to reinvest back into your infrastructure. So now let's go to the next page, which is, this is what you came to hear, I'm sure. Well, how much is it going to cost you? Okay. The first one is Hamiltonian Park Water. Okay. And um, in Hamiltonian Park Water, we're going to give you a half a percentage point reduction. Okay. Doesn't amount to much. But in 2010, we lowered your, your rates 22%. We had to increase them 3% in 2011 because we cut them too quickly in 2010. We kept them alone in 2012. We're going to drop them a half a percentage this year because we're paying, le we're paying the debt off on that new water line. And this is a quite equivalent to what the interest is on that going forward. 
So we'll look and see, but we think we're about where we need to be in regard to how we're going to be charging you. And Hamiltonian Park Sewer, uh, in 2012, we gave you a $30.74 reduction quarter. per quarter. Okay, per quarter during here. And this year we're proposing to give you another $36.08 per quarter. So probably all together, we're probably talking about a 20% reduction to where the high was. We're going to do this and still do all the work I'm talking about because of what we've the improvements we've made. In Arcadia Hills, uh, we reduced your 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 uh, percentage. Um, let me see. I think it was seven point. 8% in 2012. We're going 12.19% this, this, I'm sorry, 10.11% this time. So in essence, we're going, and this is in water, sorry, we're going to save you about $12.19 uh, per quarter on water. So about 50 bucks a year less on water. The big one in, in Arcadia Hills is sewage. Last year we gave you a 16.5% reduction, which is $58.84. This year we're going to give you another 10.03% reduction for $32.05. This is per quarter. This is $90.89 per quarter over a two-year period. Because of the new IMA, our cost reduction plan, and the improvements we've put in place. On Stonehenge, we're going to give you a $25 per quarter break because we're going to eliminate the meter charges. They're bought and paid for already. So that represents about a 10% reduction per quarter. In Scotchtown, uh, I don't have the exact dollar figures for 2012, but we've reduced your, your, your quarterly bill by 10.9%. 10, 10 We're going to take it down another 10.24% this year. So in a two-year period, it's 21.14%. So I'd rather imagine this uh, twice. That we, right now, it's going to be another $17.85 per quarter, less than what you are currently paying. So every, every district, every district is getting a price reduction. Every district is in the black. This is the first time since I've been here in eight years that everybody's got a positive amount of money in the bank. We've been down as much as $150,000 on some of these accounts at the end of the year on others. So we've made a lot of progress, but we've made progress by creating the vision of how we wanted things to be, putting strategies in place, and then work in the plan, putting the time, the money, and the resources to make it happen. So, with that, I will open it up for any kind of questions or Bob? Uh, I can speak loud enough. Um, I commend the board. You did a great job for Scottstown Park. The other, other districts I'm not aware of what's going on. Uh, I have to say that uh, my water filters I was changing sometimes every uh, uh, four weeks, three to four weeks. Now I am changing that once every six months. Water is cleaner, less uh, less particles. Uh, my question is, you were talking about the second well. The second well was always there. You just found it? We found it back in 2006 when we started cleaning the brush. Wow. You might have known it was there. Yeah. We didn't. Oh. The man who left it and abandoned the thing, uh, you know, it was a Joe Clashing called me, boy, Doug, you won't believe what I just found. You didn't see it. I, we didn't I, see I, it. I thought you were saying, I thought we found a third well. I was like, whoa. No, no, we found we a second. Start selling our water to uh, <laughs> 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 not <laughs> to the village. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> no. I can honestly say, I mean, for people like you and Jim Pelletak and others who lived out there and lived through this, uh, we were just days from not having water coming out of your taps. I mean, the fact is that tank was a third full of mud, dirt, corrosion, and our fear was 
that it was going to rupture under the weight of all that sediment in there. And so, and and the uh, owner of the well is still walking around the streets. I guess he is. Uh, and state where nobody ever put that guy in jail. Yeah. And he was killing people <coughs> slowly. Killing I can't people. even imagine that yeah. none of the houses had meat. He didn't. One second, and I did not hear what you said about uh, the Hamiltonian sewer rates. Okay. The, it's not the rates, it's the savings. Okay, now let me get to the right page. <coughs> uh, and, and I'm glad you asked the question. Okay. The, the, way, the way you're charged, we have a rate, and then we have a flat rate for Correct. everybody yeah. on I and I. That's what I missed. The savings is on the I and I. So you'll not see any rate change on the rate per gallon usage. You see the rates, we're going to charge you $36 less per quarter for the I&I &I because that's where the improvement's been made. We're still producing the same amount of sewage, but we're not producing the same amount of water in the system. Okay. And well, you know, that and, and, what that, and what that does is everybody, <laughs> from the, the elderly couple who doesn't use much water at all, to the young family with six kids, they're all going to get a savings. If we'd done this based on rights, it would have been totally inequitable. Okay, so so the flat rate has been reduced, is what you're saying? Yes, correct. Okay, it would be really helpful if you noted that in the book when you do that, that the old flat rate as opposed to the new flat rate. Oh, it'll be in the the, the in here. It, it is in here. Uh, see, you're, you'll see, you you'll see it's zero change. See, uh, at Hamilton Ooh. Park Sewer says zeros on that right-hand column. Yeah. They're all zero. Oh, yeah, but I don't see the. It says the flat rate is 122 per home per quarter. Right? No, no, that's just what it costs you. The, the savings is we're going to charge you 36 dollars eight cents. Would you verify for me? That is it, what is the Hamiltonian flat rate at this point? I wish Bill was here. I'm saying it's $122 per home per quarter, but I don't know that. I'm assuming that's what it is. Okay. But it's going to be. But that is $36.08 less than what it was in the prior quarter. Right. And that's why I said it would be helpful if you list both of them, like you do with the rates, okay. where it's like $2,000. Sure, we can do that. Okay. Uh, you answered that question for me already. <laughs> Now, by the way, these, the, the current quarter you're in, you're going to be billed at the old rates. This doesn't start. You're going to see the first bill uh, if for the, I think the billing is from May. It starts in May, May, June, July. So with the bill you get in, in August will reflect these, these rates. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, sir. In back. Mr. Bloomfield. Yes. Well, you're the man that puts the pipe in. Uh, oh, right. You say no, no more breaks over there? No more yeah. breaks? No breaks. You oh, did okay. a great job. Thank you. Now, for, for you people who don't know in the, in the meeting, this is Mr. Pepe. He's the contractor. He lives in Hamilton Park, put the line in. Did a wonderful job. And we can say to him, we haven't had a break since you put it in 2007. But I thought we already paid for about that. We still pay for the debt. Well, now we we got four hundred thousand from the federal government. You charge us nine hundred thousand. <laughs> that much? Yeah. We, we yeah. Have yeah. Much. Now, if you want to do that's something, about it. Okay, that's yeah. the right number. I don't need. So we had to borrow a half a million. Oh no! <laughs> Wrong question. I'm sorry. Next right? <laughs> <Man, laughs> question. You want to go just like that? Yeah. I have a tough question okay. for you. Okay, thank you. I have to say, first of all, I got to say you've been doing a wonderful job. Thank you very much. The one question I got about this. Um, uh, this is uh, New, Farm, New York Farms LLC. Yes. About this uh, sewage and yes. water. Yes. How did that kind of work hooking up into Hamiltonian Park? I'm there for about 38 years. Right. We always have problems with water. Never had enough water. Right. How did that kind of work? They make really, they we had, really well? We had public hearings on it in here where people came. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, no problem. No problem. And the engineer uh, for us said that looking at all the water that, that uh, New York Farms has, they have much more water than they need from their wells. And what we're going to do is put a 
second storage tank up that they're going to pay bulk of to put in between them and Maplewood across the street. And we're going to loop the water so that Hamiltonian Park and uh, New York Farms will have twice the amount of fire water uh, to, for fire protection. Um, it, it should really help us out tremendously in Hamiltonian Park in regard to the, uh, the volume of water available. They got to drill new wells, you say? They've got them already. Yeah, but they, they did. They tested the wells and they're, they're ready to go. They're not in the same vein that we are. No. Evidently not. No. Okay. Because and sewage, which, which how did that going to work? We're going to put up the English stations because the ones in there. Are not no, the, what they're going to do, they're going to put in uh, uh, their own lift stations. Yeah. They're going to tie into our uh, pre pressure main or whatever it's called. To our, to our yeah. suit. Right, and, and so it, it's, all, it's all engineered. It will not, we right. don't have to replace our pumps. Well, our first main going up over there, you know, it's leaking all the time, you know. That fella that lives over there, you know, and Jack make rain number two, every time it rains over the bed, and the team gets his, his, his uh, basement gets all full of sewage and all that kind of stuff. So if you add up some more without changing those pipes, you know, you know, I, I, I don't know. That. Uh, I, I don't really, know. That's the first I've heard about that. Yes, you really heard about it? Yeah. Well, yeah, no. Okay. It's, uh, it's Mr. Peacock, number two over there. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, 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 a, that's a different problem. Different story. Yeah. He's a different guy. We know about that. Problem. You know about that, right? Yes. Yeah. It's just because he's my neighbor and I don't I want him to complain to me. And you're a nice guy. You're just saying. Yes, it's me. I say, what do I do? I say, I don't know. I gotta go hey. see Mr. Bloomfield. Hey, where, where have you been for the last six years? I've been working. I've been working. I have no time for politicians. I know this. I gotta work. Good. You know, Thank you very much. One of the added benefits to that, to bringing these other houses online and bringing them into your district, is all of their infrastructure will be brand new. So whatever repairs have to be made, if it's on the basic infrastructure, they will share in the cost. But their infrastructure is new, so they will share in the cost of fixing probably your infrastructure. So you broaden the base of how many people are going to pay for the repair, and really the repair will be focused in the older subdivision. So, I mean, you have tremendous benefits for these people coming into your system rather than going directly into their own systems, and that's one of the reasons why we did it. So, any, thank you, Bill. Any other yeah. questions? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. The only reason we use the mic is because that's how it records in the minutes. Yeah. Plus, you want to be on camera, for sure. <laughs> well, sir, there you go. Uh, you're to be commended both for your civic and your fiscal and financial responsibility because having experienced what happened in uh, Scottstown, the financial scare that we went through with prior administrations that sat here, right. uh, you know, they were looking to, uh, you know, put a Cadillac in the garage and, and, and we didn't need it. We right. needed somebody to look at what we had objectively with, uh, you know, as you used the term before with Joe, uh, with a sharp pencil to fix what needed to be fixed and not just come in clean house and do everything bottom up. And we did not need that. And uh, I just wanted to take, and I support what Bob said. That's why I wanted to follow Thank up on that point. Uh, you guys did a wonderful job and you're to be commended for it. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. And my wife told me when I came here, find out how much the work is going up. And it's going down. Well, oh, I know. Believe me, this is an easy conversation right now. <laughs> she may take a lot to dinner for that. <laughs> Okay, and it, yes sir. Thank you. That's an awesome uh, Amazonian park. Every year we come here and we do the same dance. We find out how much we're going to be paying. But in any of these papers, there's no figures concerning how much money is taken in by the district and exactly where it goes. Is it much to ask for once a year to see where our money really goes? Well, we can, we can have the, the budget office print that out, yes. It's just another page yeah, paper sure. in this package. Yeah, right. We can do that. Oh, okay. Good. I, one of the things that we try to do and, and is to simplify it to the point where it's not too cumbersome. Unless, I mean, you may understand that, but we can certainly get you, we can still get that to you now. But uh, a lot of times people come in and they, they're, they're glazed over by looking at all these numbers, wondering what, what 
But people who like them, love them. Yeah, so we will get money, avoided. How much money does Kyle get, and for what? Right. Yeah. How much rainwater is going through this system? I, I can say this to you. I, I didn't have it for the town board, and we went through these numbers on. Yeah. Hamilton Park. To the village than you did last year. So 2% of that great big number is what you save. So th th it's working. This I and I reduction is working. So yeah, we'll, we'll have numbers for you next year. I, I just want to add to that, uh, Doc. If you remember a couple of years back and, uh, when we spoke about that before we went into arbitration, uh, you even asked me the question, John, about the I and I. But back then, Hamiltonian was like three and a half times the water you take in. So you were taking in like eight and a half million, if I remember correctly, and you were giving them close to 29 million gallons. So subtract the eight, 21 million was water. That was back then. It's not happening now. Uh, another question, though? Sure. Many years ago, probably around... We did. You know where the worst places are. We do. in Hamiltonian Park and 35 gallons a minute. Our estimate is that we get 5 million gallons of water of that 21 million you're talking about going to the building. Now, there's another line that Mr. Noel and myself are talking about digging up, 600 feet long. But that line, to dig that line up is catastrophic money-wise. It sucks all the money out that we would use on some quick fixes. So what we're doing is we're, we're picking the low fruit first. When we pick all the low fruit, we're going to get a ladder and go up in the tree. And we'll use that smoke test to do that, that part of it. How much does 600 feet cost? Uh, I have it in my desk there. It's quite expensive. So many, I just don't remember, but it's uh, dozens of dollars per foot. But then the other thing is I put in uh, for stimulus money two years ago. And I think I put in for like five to ten million dollars to rebuild both sewer districts in Hamiltonian Park and Arcadia Hills. And knowing very well you don't have uh, ten million dollars. Hundred and fifteen dollars a foot. Broadway yeah, is, is, is a ballpark. His ballpark figure it's about hundred and fifteen million dollars a foot to dig no, it that's up. That's not right. That's not right. Well, no. To dig it up. Seventy dollars a foot. Not to repair. How much? Late, you can't make paper. We just got a bid back there, seventy dollars a foot. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, no, certainly when we get to that level, we will. We will. Real bad for bids and do the job. And if you get that much of water going in there, you pay and you know, the longer you wait. Yeah. Well, well, we know that. You got That's why we're you might as well bite the bullet. Well, we we we're spending two hundred thousand dollars cap back in it. We're gonna keep doing this over a five year period to put in about a million bucks. <laughs> and we wanna keep the rates coming down. we're we're really trying to, to uh um, make this thing as palatable. We could go out and borrow all the money for five million bucks and kill everybody, just like the village did when they put in a new sewer, or sewer plant. The rates went off the roof, and we just don't want to do that. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Rosa Freyas Martinez. I mean, I don't know if this is a question or a petition. Okay. I'm a new homeowner, I could say. My, I own my home for about four years. You know uh -huh. why? I really work in the city, so I'm, I just enjoy it on the weekend. I was noticing that uh, Hamiltonian Park has a different like rate yes, in dollars, do. like we do. Yes. Uh, I don't spend not even a thousand dollars for right. three months, right. and for me, I think it's very high the price that I'm paying for such a small amount of gallon that I'm that I'm consuming. So it's very possibility that. We at Arcadia Hills also have the same cat category that you have from zero to five thousand dollars. No, I'll tell you why. The um, the rates were established years ago, and each subdivision has a different number of homes. And as Mr. Cantorino was alluding to, the more homes you have, the less it is per home. The cost to get the water to you 
whether you use any of it or not is the cost that's in those lower rates. And, and because it, there's a fixed cost just running the pumps and all that, whether you use five gallons or ten thousand gallons. And so we we have we have established these rates based on experience. And so we get this question every year. It's a very good question. Uh, particularly we get it from a lot of people who are either single or older and don't have children around. And they don't want to spend all this money on water. But that that and this is universally done across the nation with all water districts and there are different levels based on how much it costs to get the water in. So that's how it works. Now, maybe one day we can bring it down. I don't want to be saying no we can't. But uh, I'm sure as we get more cost reduction in place, maybe we can. That's the goal. But good question. Thank you. Yes, please. Okay. Folks, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and take uh, care. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs> okay, we we got more. We got more. more, 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 more yes. Yeah. Hey Jim, was, was uh, Michelle in your class? Piggly me and you met her in Gar Hall. Michelle Piggly me, do you remember her? The little girl. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, what was her? Uh, the, I'm sorry. What was her dad's name? Uh, story. Huh? All right. Thanks. All right. Oh, is that right? And you're here. That's that. <laughs> Happy birthday. Day. <laughs> March 11, March 25, 2013, and regular meetings of 20, February 28, March 14, and March 28, 2013. So, second. So, um, February 20, 25th has already been accepted, so you can take that off. Can I guys, thank you. March 19th, thank you. And then I had a few um, change, minor changes that I gave to uh, Priscilla before the meeting. So. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Would someone like to make a motion to authorize the supervisor to pay manual accounts payable check run as of 4 9 2013 amounting to $9,811.38 and accounts payable check run for 4 4 2013 amounting to $179,243.72. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Now, ladies, uh, you have something you'd like to look by it? Yeah. I'll take a microphone. Okay. Here, you have this one. Okay.
And if you want to break another song, that's okay. I'll go ahead and speak with your We may have some of the same issues, but I like this. Oh, sure. Sorry. Um, Mr. Harley, you said Hampton Road? Hampton Road. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm here is because uh, we have a neighbor, um, 51 Hampton Road. They own a horse farm. I cannot tell you the owner's name, but there was a party of there last year. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's being investigated for arson. Oh, I know what you mean. Um, yes. Okay, so they knocked down the house. They did not get a permit. The debris is still there. Right. It's coming into the road. It's getting okay. dangerous. It's, I'm, I'm directly across, so some of the debris is coming to my, onto my property. Um, and now they're building, they're using storage containers, and they're putting up a fence. And I don't think they have a permit, and they're going to put cows in. Okay. I want to know if there's any recourse because they just seem to. But we need to look back into that. That is still under investigation, criminal investigation. But uh, the fact that they the, okay. and they so they can't they can't touch that pile of stuff. Oh. Uh, the insurance companies are involved by Dennis. Dennis is our attorney for the town. What? Do, how do we approach this? Yeah, the building inspector will go out and inspect. We'll do, we'll do that. I mean, I, I know he, he has inspectors because they have an in-ground pool where I can bring okay. up two young children. Right. They didn't have a fence around it. Right. And he just went up a cyclone fence. But I believe one of the firefighters fell into okay. the empty in-ground pool during the fire. Right. Um, but the question is, I don't, if they can't removed the debris. They did not the house down. They took tractors or right. whatever. They destroyed the house. They right. piled it. They're adding to the pile. You can see trees. You can see their garbage. Their garbage is forming. Are they allowed to do that? No, they shouldn't be. I guess they, uh, the proper procedure would be for Neil or someone from the well, office out there to inspect, investigate, and possibly cite. And I don't know what status is. Well, these people live out of town. Because we, well, they, no, no, they're bankrupt. May very well be that this is owned by the bank now, but it still would be an important no, no, action. Yeah, there, there's some, yeah. but they're going to have to spend money to work on what this lady's pet saying. It's a, it's a shambles. Oh, okay. It's terrible. And it's mean, terrible. It's but I, I'm worried more even about the health hazard because it's my, one of my understandings is there's asbestos in that, with a furnace or whatever it is, yeah. and, uh, and they, they, they do the so blowing. I, I've written it down. We will have someone yeah, out there. I'm surprised that's not cordoned off. Well, One. We, we, I think, yeah. I know the police and the, I think even the FBI may be involved in this one. It, it's a big deal. I have spoken to the police because their horses have gotten loose. They've gotten yeah. over my property. Mm -hmm. My husband has had to get horses on the road. We're afraid they're going to the highway. Right. Um, because right. the end of the block is the highway. Let us let us start. To, I, I will start in the morning with the building inspecting office. I, I think mean, we're. I, I, I think they weren't allowed to go on the property. Like that's what we've been. Well, the, I will. Well, we can go on there if it's a hazard. Yeah, you mean you, that they being who the owners or they? I've called the police. Um, that you know, I guess they have that probable cause. I mean, There's if problems. the horse was loose, they were able to bring. I mean, there was no trespassing signs like that. I wouldn't trust the building inspector to just go and inspect. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, no, okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Totally separate and distinct from the uh, okay. criminal aspect. Yeah. What we'll do in the morning, I will see the building yeah. inspector tomorrow, have him start this uh, process. But uh, we're going to have to probably get legal involvement. Yeah. And when you get legal involvement, sometimes it takes a while. But I know that this is being. Okay. This, uh, this is a very convoluted. Uh, it involves even. Things I'm not even going to mention. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You go out to. I, I get to the road, sure. But you can see it from the 17th. Right, yeah, I'm aware of the dreadful yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, it wasn't dreadful when I put my house five years ago. No, I understand. It was going to be the property. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We got yeah. it. It's well, really. Okay, I got it written down here. Okay. I, I don't want to use the microphone if I don't have to. Yes, you have. Oh, yeah. That's how we record you. <coughs> okay. My name is Sharon Quackabush, and I live at 52 Hampton Road. And I can tell you that Neil Holloran has been on that property more times than I can count. Right. I have also called your office twice last year in March. I never received a return phone call. Um, I also have been told by Neil Holleran that he is not allowed on property unless he is invited. 
and he also told me, his secretary told me that the fence that was around the pool that the uh, assistant chief of the fire department fell in during the night of the fire was was perfectly fine, that it was didn't have to be brought up to code. It is my impression that when a property is sold, that before it can be, um, when renovations are due, or at the time of the inspection of the sale, the things that are not up to today's codes need to be brought up to code. Like if you have a deck that is sure. that, you yeah, know. That's true. Yeah. Right. So um, I believe her name is Kathleen, told me that the fence was fine. As far as when the fence was put in in 1970, it didn't require a fence. So um, Neil Holler also told me um, regarding the pile of garbage in the back on the property that they were bringing dump truck loads full of rubbish in. Um, and I am the one who called Albany and I spoke to the asbestos control and had the inspector come do his inspection and shut them down when they knocked the house down. Um, they were told at that time that the only way to remove that home would be to tent it for hazmat and go in with a hazmat team. That's correct. And they were told to hire a hazmat team, work with Neil Hollering. Who's going to pay for it? It's what I'm saying. This I, thing is I understand. It's in foreclosure with, the, things, yeah. with the original property owner, which is Victor. Right. Um, Victor, uh, I think it's Sensiona. Or, um, he's trying to get farm back because they haven't paid him in two years. Right. Um, who he, uh, He's a very good friend of mine. So everything right. that's going on there, I'm, I'm aware of. Um, but besides all of that, um, speaking of the rubbish that is out back, that um, we were told was asbestos being brought in, trucked in, truckload after truckload, large sum truck. Um, Neil Holleran again told me that he cannot enter property to go to inspect that pile without we, an invitation. We, we will, I will take care of this in the morning but, but in, ter in terms of, of right. starting something. Now, and there may be some reason why he cannot. Well, he told me to sneak on property and take pictures. That's what he told me to do, which I, I find yeah. I find here that now Holleran just doesn't want to get involved. Yeah. And I've spoken with Broderick a thousand times about this. Uh, uh, am I correct? I mean, we've had conversations regarding this matter for the past year. He so. put up no parking signs. He actually put up no parking signs. There are rail containers on the property, four or five of them, rail containers, like big shipping containers, okay. that are sitting on the property directly in front of both our homes. They've been sitting there for forever. We were told by Neil Holleran because it's agricultural that they could be there. Um, that, here, may, that may be. Well, here it states that you cannot have a storage container visible to the boundaries. Here it says uh, outdoor storage of materials, equipment, or vehicles in an order uh, in yards provide that such outdoor storage not exceed 10 on the event. Let me find it. Okay, 10% of the area of the lot and is effectively screened from public roads and from any adjacent residential district. This, this is probably agriculture exempt. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, you know, you got a lot of technical questions here, and I think that maybe the better part of valor here is to have a meeting between me, you, Neil, and our attorney to figure out how we proceed on because. This is going. Uh, I know. I don't even know who owns it. Giovanni De Lorenzo owns it. But and I mean, Sal Lombardo lives in the camper on property. Right. But I mean, but there's. I know this whole thing is. There's a lot of. Is what a loophole. It, well, it's, it's being investigated by some high-level people in. The state in police in the town of Monroe have it. No, it's beyond them. No, it's not because okay. I was I was at the deposition <laughs> with uh, their Nelson. Um, this is like the attorney who's trying it for the insurance company. I've also spoken to the investigator. Last well, we may know more about than I do. But I, I've heard that there was even some attempt, attempt. No, the feds are not involved. They're huh? trying to prosecute them federally for fraud and arson. But the state troopers told me that they may be trying them for federal prosecution, but it's still a state investigation. Well, that could be, but I know there's some federal people involved. Yes. I, mean, I don't, and it may be very clandestine. There's, it goes beyond this property, is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Not the owner, right? But the people who set the fire. Who burned it down? Yeah. And 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 I think there's as long as your arm a list of things that they're looking at. Yeah. And I, I don't want to tell you more than I know, but I think really. If we want to get to the bottom of this, we probably ought to have a joint meeting mm -hmm. between Neil, myself, our attorney, or whoever, to find out what 
what the issues are, what the options are, and how long it will take to do it. But I do know from a, other land that we've had in the town of Goshen, it looks like a pigsty. Sometimes it takes a long time. To work it it took six months just to get somebody cut their grass. And they didn't let it out. Can I just say they've taken the containers now and made a wall across the front of the property. They backed them up, back to back. I saw that yesterday. And I don't understand that. That's no. visible by our property. That is a complete eyesore when you're standing on either one of ours front. Well, any, right. I mean, it's horrible. Right. It's an absolute eyesore. The garbage that is piled up, you can see from 17, it's a yeah. huge amount of trash out back. Yeah. You know, the debris from the house is blowing all over the neighborhood. I'm walking my dog the other day, siding is blowing at me. Yeah, it's just, it's become a hazard to live there. Now, I have a question. What is the zoning for a fence for cattle? What, how, what is the height requirement? Does it require a permit on land? They took the fence down that was originally there five years ago. There's the, been the, no fence for, well, for forever. This is, the, the, the farming is ag exempt. They call it ag exemption. Right. Uh, they can do a lot of things that you and I can't do on our property. But does it have to be a, a fence bearing enough weight to pull the cow back? Uh, Not I, a three-foot chicken wire fence, correct? Well, if you're responsible only, you don't want your cow. Well, that's what they fence. have. That's what they put up. Yeah. Six, a uh, three-foot chicken wire is now going to hold cows. And I do believe that the line of containers is their back wall. Okay. You know what I mean? They're going, it's yeah, like, right. that's what they're using. <clears throat> Well, I'm going to have Neil go out tomorrow and look at it. I'm going to have and try to set the meeting between. All I want to say to that is good luck. No, no. I, I want to have a. <laughs> good luck. You may get further with it than I did, but for five years I've been fighting with Neil Holler and, and everybody else. Okay. And well, I didn't. The police you know, tell you it's not a police matter. Neil Holler tells you you can't enter property without an invitation. Now, are, are you are, are, are you available for a meeting on this? Whenever you need. Okay, and what is your telephone number? Um, I work for JPK Environmental. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. You what now? I work for JPK Environmental, Joe Pops' office. Yeah. Okay. You're more than welcome to call me there from 9 to 3, I'm Monday exactly to Friday. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello. Is the only access and egress to the property on through Hamilton Road? Yes. yes. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Then this, well, okay. Well, you know, I think you can address it in a number of ways. What's being, of this yeah, what's like being described to me is uh, not accurate. And by accurate, I don't mean to say that you don't have your facts right, but there's a great number of things can be done yeah. based upon what's described to me is going on in that property. Well, what we need to do is we need to find out what the Yeah, yeah, we've got to get into it. We've got to get in. It's very accessed by the highway, and now they put up a huge pile of manure. Okay, it's agriculture, but do I have to wake up to green air every day? I mean, it's disgusting. <coughs> I've never had this. I've lived there for 17 years, and we've had horses, and you know, Victor had it. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. it was a run-down, ratty horse farm that was just beautiful. Yeah, right. They turn this in now. It's like the smell. My kids go out the door in the morning to the bus. They're like, "Oh my God! You don't even no. want to swallow because you can taste it." I will try to set up a meeting. Uh, again, between our attorney, and myself, Neil, and whoever else we need to have there. To get something started. So, uh, my question is if hazmat suits have to be involved and assess those, if they don't have the money to remove I, that stuff, will it stay there? I, I, have, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I just don't know. I do know that when you take a building down, the entire building is considered asbestos related or, or in, 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 you know, involved. Uh, where it, when that building was standing up, they might have gone in and find out where the asbestos was, like in the basement on the furnace of this. But now that it's down, it's my understanding that the whole building, that whole pile is considered asbestos. Right. I have been told by the investigator, um, the fire investigator for New York State, Right. and the one who did the investigation on that, um, Joe Myers. I was just going to say it was Joe. I spoke with Joe Myers. He said that building is ready to go. They do not need it any further for any investigation. They found their points of origin. They know where the fire was, was started. They right. have done everything they need with that building, and that building can be removed. And if you need to speak with Joe Myers, he Well, this is... Well, no, no. I, I, what it is is the, the man who owns it is the one who's going to have to remove it. Can he be forced to do that? 
And again, I can tell you, he's dragging it. It's slowly getting longer. That's why we need the attorney involved. You know, it's slowly disappearing, little pieces, and then he'll throw a tree on it to to fill in that area. He's burying it in the back of the property is what he's doing. And I believe that's where that dump pile is coming from. Okay. They're very shady people. We will meet you over at Joe's. You can do that. We'll make Joe buy lunch <laughs> with all that money. Oh no, you're saving the money, not him. He still got your money. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting his fair share. <laughs> yeah. uh, is this place closed down? Yes. Well, well that's no, another thing. It was, it was, it was it it the building caught fire. Right, I'm it aware. Broke it down. Where? But it's still. I mean, the main it wall is there. there. But it's now, where are they getting their water yeah. from? I where are they getting their electricity from? The man is living in the camper on site. Where is he flushing? Where is his waste going to? Where is his electricity coming from? There used to be a generator that ran, but no longer. Okay. And Victor told me, who's the original owner who holds the mortgage on the house, right. that there was um, that the electric went from a pole behind the house. So if they're hooked up to that pole for the barn, that's illegal because the O&R shut them out. They were done. I have no idea. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, it sounds like they're even bringing material in. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that, that, that's, that's not permissible. No, it's huge. Yeah, we need to look at it. Yeah, we need to look at it. I don't even know what the question is. Sure. I'm about them. And I can tell you, Neil Howard is well aware. You know what he told me? Take pictures of the dump truck. Get license plate numbers. Find out who owns it. I said, Neil, that's not my job. I work for an environmental company, but that's not my job. Okay. I mean, I hope you understand our frustration. We have been around the block with this. Right, it's sure, I do. Enough. No, no, I just don't have the answers to your questions. The first time I've heard about it. And when you said you, you called, call you would... No, when you said you called twice, I never got the message. I did call twice, twice last March, because they tore it. When, they, when my daughter sent me a video on her phone, right. to my phone, because I wasn't home, of them with a the bucket, and they popped the house, and the house went... Right. And so right over, I was like, that is it. Well, normally when I get messages, people deliver my message to me, and I call right back. We will set something in motion on this. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Listen, thank you. Thank you very much. I will. I will. You're Christine. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, that's her grandfather. <laughs> she's only at McDonald's for wedding. She's a cabal. <laughs> yeah, that's a great day. How are you? Okay. Would well, someone like to make a motion that we adjourn and go in executive session with the intent not to return to talk about the first personal issue? I know. I also want to add the Andrews tax for sure litigation. Andrew. Andrews tax okay. circle. Okay. 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 Second. All favor say aye. Aye. Thank you for staying. Only um that's not yeah, we just